On the surface, they had not very much in common, other than the fact that they were both superstar female entertainers from decades ago. But Edith Piaf and Marlena Dietrich were both deeply emotional and remarkably complicated women who thrilled millions with their talent while their personal lives were frequently in turmoil. Louise Pitre and Jane Lewis are portraying these two giants on stage at Toronto's CAA Theatre until early January. The play is called Piaf Dietrich. And they join us now for more. Hi. And I'm so thrilled that you're here. I Yay. have to confess, I'm very excited about the fact that you two are here. Because I saw the show and it's phenomenal. Thank you. It's great that you saw the show. Yes. It, 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 was, it was absolutely wonderful. Now, I don't want to assume, because the, the two people you portray have been not with us for a while. Mm. I don't want to assume everybody knows who they are. So tell us. Mm. Who was Edith Piaf? Edith Piaf is probably the most famous uh, singer in France. I mean, period. I think more people showed up for her funeral than for anyone mm. else. She sang with uh, such passion. That's what she was known for. She was famous in France, but then came across. She was famous in French Canada, for sure, but conquered New York and the world, eventually. And Marlene Dietrich. Marlene Dietrich would be known for her movies, her films, I think, first and mm -hmm. foremost, and as a, a, a screen beauty. <laughs> Hair and makeup does a lot when I'm, <laughs> when I'm at work. No, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, I would say her, her film work mm -hmm. and um, her, her beauty, her, her sense of style, the way in which um, she brought um, the look of, of men's clothing into fashion mm -hmm. and her sexuality. I think she was known for that mm -hmm. as well. She was very open sexually. She loved who she loved. Mm -hmm. Do you think you look like her? Um, I'll tell you, when I you're know, on stage... I know, people do say yes. that. Oh, I know. You are the spitting image of her on stage. Oh, no, there's a definite resemblance. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And yeah. then the makeup and the highlighting, right. whatever. And the wig you're, and everything, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess. For sure. I'll take it. And the sure. voice. I'll take it. And the voice. Yes, the voice. Um, you do capture her voice, which which was lower than good, most actors at good, the time. Good, good, yes. No, I, I watched a lot of her films. I watched a lot of her interviews so that I could um, um, not copy the voice, but so that I could, you know, in, in, interpret, interpret it, it mm -hmm. and and make it my own as as much as possible and make it as natural as possible. And it has, it, it, it's very easy now to slip down there and to use that accent and to, to live there because I've become so familiar with her. Yeah. Now, as a girl from Smooth Rock Falls, <laughs> as you were, <laughs> once upon a time, did you know much about Edith Piaf before you got the part? Oh, yeah. You and did. I, I, I've been singing Piaf stuff for a long time, actually, in concert, and I've done other Piaf shows that were not nearly as wonderful as this one. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember distinctly being a kid in Montreal and my mother telling me about Edith Piaf because she, my mother loved to sing. She was not a great singer. She sang with gusto though, full out, and got sharper and sharper as she <laughs> went along. But I remember her singing Imna L'Amour and me asking, and she telling me about Piaf. So huh. yes, I've known of Edith Piaf for a long time. This is gonna sound like an odd question, but, but we've already established the fact that you look a lot like Marlena Dietrich when you were on stage and wearing what she wore and mm -hmm. made up the way she was made up. Um, uh, yeah, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful about this. I don't get to be too pretty in this well, show. Well, this is the thing. I mean, Edith Piaf was not what you would call a classical beauty the way that... Oh, oh no. Am I being too nice about Far it? Yeah. yeah. So you don't really... She, she, oh my God, she had zero sense of style. She didn't okay. give a damn about it either, mm -hmm. frankly. Uh, she wore a black dress when she mm -hmm. sang. She wore a black dress. That's it. So, no makeup. She got glammed up when she came to the States, actually. Hmm. That's where they glammed her up a little bit when she was in New York for album covers and posters, but no. Yeah. And as an actor, you don't mind being made less attractive? I love order? my second wig, the one where she's lost yeah. all her hair and it looks <laughs> like hell. But there's something that comes with that. You know, yeah. I mean, hmm. one of my favorite Parts of the show is singing Non Je Regrette Rien, bare feet in a hospital yeah. gown. I regret with nothing. With all my hair missing. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. That's an incredible feeling. Yes. Now, I had, it's of course, freeing. heard it's of freeing. both of these, uh, you know, superstars, but, but frankly didn't know that they knew each other at all. And beyond mm -hmm. that, didn't know that they 
They had a life. They had a long. They had a long relationship. relationship a but long it was more than it was more than a. I mean, it was more than a friendship here, right? How much of this do we want to go into? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, you know, we're saying the jury's still out on that yeah. as to as to how intimate it was, but yes. they definitely had a, a real love and admiration uh, for each other, and um, a true friendship. A, a, Don't and, know how deep it went. Right. But. Well, I mean, they did share a place like they were spending a lot of time together yeah, in New York. Yeah. That really happened. Right. And Dietrich helping Piaf. Th that's all With true her, for uh, sure. Uh, so I don't helping know. Helping her career, helping mm -hmm. to. In that apartment, mm -hmm. did they actually sleep together? I mean. Well, they do in the play. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So did we, they in real life or are we taking some poetic license mean, uh, here? That's we're, teeny we're bit, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Teeny bit of poetic, poetic yeah. license. Yes. That's you a heck so. of a poetic so. license to take ah, those. Well, we know that Dietrich for sure. She very much. She was bisexual, no yes. question about Yes, it. no Absolutely. question about that. Yeah. And Piaf was so out, out there. there. That it, it makes, makes perfect sense. <laughs> sense that it probably did happen, yeah. 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 Okay. So there's actually nothing to prove that they had a sexual a relationship. A sexual relationship? Not yeah. that I know. But I'm you are aware. inferring it and yes. portraying we, it. We are, yes. But they did have this incredible relationship Chemistry. for all those years mm -hmm. and I mean to the point where that little bit in the show with the little piece of paper I, love I give her yes. that says n'oublie pas que je t'aime don't forget that I love you she truly that's true that is Marlene true. They found kept it. that piece of paper on her it bedside was on table. her bedside table when she died after being a recluse for all those years isn't, isn't that crazy that, that is amazing yeah. yeah that is amazing yeah yeah, yeah. how did boy I, this is a really weird question for me to ask but I'm gonna go here anyway you got a cold right now. I do. Yeah. And there's a kissing scene in this play. Yeah. And you probably are contagious. How do you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Louise. <laughs> 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 and we can't fake that one. We got. No, it. We have to. Really... We have to do it. Well, so you so just we go. Just, we just go. We just what go are you going to do? It and... Well, you're going to get a cold. Is what's going to happen? Maybe, Maybe not. Maybe I not. believe. No, touch I've had wood, my flu wood. shot. I take my cold FX every day. I'm taking emergency every day. Whatever yeah, I'm doing, okay. I'm working out. I'm I, eating I just, right. I just got lucky. Whatever. Because I, I'm taking pretty good care of myself. I think, but. Mm. And if I get a cold, well, I'll get through well, it too. We'll figure it out. So be it. You, you just learn how to manipulate your voice differently yeah. and sing things differently. Yeah. And and obviously it, it helps in terms of my speaking voice. I didn't think I could get any lower than I do when I'm in the yeah, show. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> it's but, perfect. Uh, but the singing voice, um, yeah, when you have to sing, yeah. Do you so, sometimes have to forego the, the highest notes if your voice is just I just place them differently. There? No, mm -hmm. I, just, I just put it, like, I... I know that I sing more than Marlena ever did in the show anyway, but uh, last night um, there was probably a little more head voice and yeah. a little more spin to the voice that she would never do just because I knew that that would be the only way that I could right. hit the notes. Gotcha. Yeah, because some of the stuff sits so low that it doesn't matter, but if I, if I go up, not to get too technical, but mm -hmm. if I go up into my sort of my, my uh, mixed voice and up into my head, then then it becomes complicated, and then you have to do some navigating. But you are naturally an alto anyway, aren't I'm, you? No, I'm a soprano. You are. Soprano. I sing higher than this one Is over right? Oh, my God. I, I have a way lower voice than she does. Yeah. I know. So it's funny that she's... I kept saying, wouldn't it be cool to switch? Maybe we could... So I would love to play... Huh. Dietrich, my yeah. God, that's my I range. Couldn't, I couldn't sing. <laughs> I couldn't sing in French the way oh, no. you do. Oh no! Oh damn! Mm, sorry. Okay. Couldn't do we'll, that. We'll find something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you both, in the course of of doing your research for your respective parts, as you you know, you knew all the music, you'd seen the movies, whatever. How, when you are interpreting your respective characters, do you ensure that you're not imitating them, but that you're actually interpreting? How you see yeah. Them. Do you know what? Well, Imitating is a very dangerous thing, and it ends up being unreal, untrue. Mm -hmm. I am not imitating Piaf. However, I am being very true to her style. She had some little idiosyncrasies when she sang, the way she backed off notes or she fell off of them. Her phrasing was impeccable. It was cool, different. So I am true to that, but it's very much Louise Pitre up there singing. My voice is not as nasal as hers. Uh, my pitches, she used to go flat a bit on long notes. I won't do that. Mm -hmm. It's it's different. It's a lot of me, but keeping in mind yeah. who she we is. We are so interpreters. A, We're not yes. impersonators. We're yes. interpreters. Absolutely. And um, and yeah. I and I believe that people are certainly accepting that when they come to see the show. 
you know. Yeah. When you talk, though, do you try to put a bit of Germanic accent in the way you uh, speak? Yes, sometimes I, I do. Yeah. She, t yeah. She, she had a very funny little R, so she says America, and uh, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of some of the other words. And I, and I throw it in every now and again, mm -hmm. because I believe that she worked very hard to not sound German mm -hmm. and to not let, allow that affectation to come through. Mm -hmm. So I will toss it in, um, but I don't do it all the time because that, that, in fact, she was, she was very, very well educated and she spoke fluent French, German and English. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and she did learn how to play the piano and the violin and, yeah. and, um, so, so she was very educated and, and in turn spoke, she did speak English very well. Mm. So I just, I give a yeah. flavoring of it. I give a flavoring of it. Yeah. I need to ask you about your character's relationship with love because mm. she she had a torturous life. Oh my God! Yeah. Picked the wrong guys all the time. Um, yeah, all the what time. Was, what, what, what do you that's think was going That's actually, on? I think that's a thing in common that's with these probably two the, ladies. Yes. That's the beauty of the show is that it shows the love that lasted between these two. Mm. That didn't while last with me. They never or, found it in yeah. their own hmm. mm, lives. respective lives. You know, mm. she, and I think Piaf, you know, so much is made of Marcel Sardin, the boxer. With she was truly, she was in love with him for sure. But uh, had he not died in a plane crash. Oh, I don't spoiler, know. If, spoiler but, alert. If it would yeah. have happened. Anybody right. who knows, How much? knows yeah. about Marcel yeah. Sardin. But it's one of those things. Yeah, it was just one after the other, full on love that last, that never lasted. That was her life. But she mm -hmm. lived it, boy, mm -hmm. full mm -hmm. tilt. She sure did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think Marlena Dietrich saw in Edith Piaf? Because they, they were not alike at all in some uh -huh. respects, right? I think it was the rawness yeah. of, of Piaf, um, the honesty of mm. Piaf, um, and you know maybe a little bit of, of that, that roughness and, and everything because Marlena was so poised, so put together. And elegant and yes. you know, gorgeous so and glamorous. Yes. And yeah. All of yeah. the things Edith Piaf was not. Exactly. Yeah. So you, they're, they're quite the odd couple, aren't so they? So the mm -hmm. maybe the opposite attract. Hmm. No, for sure, this is what? all about blah. Yeah. <laughs> which, here's how I feel, here's my heart, here's yeah. my gut. Mm -hmm. Which, she, she, would, which exactly. she would do but behind closed doors. Right. Huh. I mean, she would never yeah. uh, allow that to happen mm -hmm. in a public uh, platform, but certainly... But she was fiery and tempestuous oh behind the scenes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which we deal with in the, in yeah. the show, in Excuse the play, me. which I love. <coughs> We did say you had a cold. <laughs> Are you so, uh, I'm tearing up because I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You are suffering. I can see it. And I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. You know, and this, uh, the terrible thing is we have you taping okay. here. We have you taping here on, on what is a day off for you. The theater yeah. is dark tonight, as they say. Yes. And here's how you yeah. choose to spend That's your time. It's our well, we didn't choose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, zing. we agreed. Good point. Zing, zing, zing. Good point. Good point. Are you okay? Should we? we? Yeah, I'm fine. Or did you stop? Good. No, we haven't stopped. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'll have some more. But it, it, you know, if 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 we need to call an ambulance right now, I'm content to do that. Claire, <laughs> okay, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> well, okay, where do we wanna go here? I tell you where I wanna go. I want to show you two at work. Okay. Oh, can we do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sheldon, if you would, let's roll a clip. And when you speak, and you sing from above, every day words seem to turn heart and soul to me, and life will always be la vie Oh my God, I mean, that's the, I mean, that's them. You two are them. You are them. What, that song is, I mean, that's the song you know everybody is waiting everybody, to hear, right? right? And so the pressure to, to nail that must be intense, because you know that's the song everybody wants to well, hear. Well, that one and, and Non Je Ne Regrette Rien, yes, I okay. think, is the yeah. other where yeah. you hear a reaction. But what I love as well is, yes, La Vie en Rose, the most famous. And we started time and time again yes. through yeah. the show. You tease and us. Spend, that's yes. right. Yes. And, and we say, I would never sing it in English. There's the whole thing about yeah. singing. But then finally, at yeah. the end, 
we do sing it actually together mm -hmm. and in English. And it's a neat arrangement of it. Yeah. It's not a straight ahead. We are singing it together with these neat little harmonies. Yeah. And yeah. it's, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I think it is together. nice when they, that we are able to come together finally yes. in song. Yes. Yeah. 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 Why, why do you think that song has, I mean, that song has legs for <sighs> decades. And it keeps being redone yeah. in uh, other, I mean, come on, just now the, Lady Gaga singing it in, uh, uh. in the Star is Born, you know? My, right. I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't know. know. What it, what, what, a great that, song is a great song. A great song you know? is a great song. Yeah. yeah. It, because well it does, said, yeah. It does persist, and I don't know how yeah. many people have, what do they say, covered it? I mean, lots right. of people yeah. have covered it, it yeah. over Oh, my years. goodness. Yeah. yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. For sure. Louise, Edith Piaf died at 47 from liver cancer. Her very famous last words were, every damn thing you do in this life, you have to pay for. Hmm. How does that sum up her life, that line? Oh, my God. There you go. You just said she was 46? 47. 47. Yeah. She looked like she was 127. <laughs> I often compare her to Judy Garland. Like, if I had to pick a who would be similar, the same kind of full-out kind of living. Piaf, yeah, she had liver cancer, but wow. There was the booze, there were the drugs, uh, serious drug addiction mm. problems, all uh, for the arthritis as well as painkillers, as well as blah, blah. But mostly not sleeping, mm. <laughs> working herself to death, basically. Did is... she have a death wish at some level? Mm. I don't know about a death wish, no. No. She knew she was gonna die. She knew she had abused her body so, so much. Mm. Uh, but I think she wanted to make sure she would die on stage. That's what I secretly think. Mm -hmm. That's why she kept working to the point. She kept passing out on Collapsing stage. On it stage. became a terrible thing, yes. But I think... Whereas Dietrich, you know... Dietrich lived, died at age 90. I know. And, but she was a recluse yes. for the last 12 or 13 years of her life. What was that about? Because she, unlike was Piaf, who that. wanted... To, to die on, you know, who wanted to die on stage. Uh, Dietrich uh, didn't want her public to see yes. the demise of this legend. Hmm. And so she yeah. l locked herself away in a Paris apartment yeah. and racked up huge telephone bills Isn't because that, that was her only hmm. connection with the outside she world. She stayed in bed. And she stayed in bed. For the last, I don't know how many years. And, be and because she was very proud of her legs. Hmm. And of course, um, they were going. And so she didn't want anybody anybody to see her. Oh my gosh. And like, no one did. Away. That's it. No. She, it's her who said, the legs are the last, last to, go. to go. Oh, I know. Yeah, isn't oh it my crazy? God. Because it was so much about that. that she, 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 uh, she never had a facelift, but she started to wear wigs in the latter part of her life when she started to do all her concert work. And she braided her hair so tightly and pulled it back, which is very painful, and, and uh, to lift her face yeah. and then put the wig over top of these braids that were hmm. very, very tiny and very, very tight to pull her face back. So makeshift plastic surgery. Oh my gosh, like. yeah. 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 And that taping, would hurt, taping. Right? What hours. hurt? Uh, it would hurt. When I was at Western painful. University, I was a piano major and my, my piano teacher in my fourth year, Dr. Von Custer, was who knew a huge fan of Marlena Dietrich. Mm. And I did a show, my first show ever, I had to do a little Dietrich bit. And he coached me on, because he had seen her in concert. Wow. And he saw one of her last concerts, and he said that she still wore the sexy, sexy gowns. <laughs> but she was wearing, if you sat in the front row, you could see this bodysuit that was skin yeah. tone, so tight, so you wouldn't, mm. see, wouldn't see any wrinkles, wrinkles or, any yeah. lines yeah. under yeah. the gown. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's a difficult way to live. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that that would be. Oh I mean, God. you know, Louise and I would both agree that this this is you know other than our show at night, like we never wear makeup. Mm. It was very nice to have your lovely makeup artist. She's the best. She's just for the for the show today. She has but kept me presentable yeah, like, here I don't for care a quarter what of a century. I, I don't care what I look no, like. No, but isn't it's this just, great? I mean, so for her, to, look at yeah. us though. We are we're of an age. I mean, shit. I'm 62. Come on, I'll be 62 next month. Here we are, starring in a musical, the two of us. It's, yeah, it that doesn't is very happen cool. very often. That is very cool. And a beautiful story about two women. They're not fighting. They love each other. Yeah, yeah they they're not go competing. through rocky mm -hmm. times. No, they're, it's love. Yeah. It's a bond that yeah. lasts forever. It's about... Which is the way Louise it. and I are in real life. 
Well, I did want to ask about that. Yeah, I, yeah. we've uh -huh. known each other uh, for over, like I met you before I met my husband, I've been married 32 years. So that's how far back we go. But what was what's bizarre <laughs> is that it, we did industrial shows. Yeah, that's the did only we do thing two? we've done together. Two or three together. Yeah. way back then. Way back, and this is the first legitimate yeah. theatrical Theater. first time show we worked together that we've done. Isn't that something? In all those years, it's amazing. Huh. No, we've had lots of drinks together we over drinks the years. Drinks and dinner and <laughs> but whatever. But that's it. Yeah, I, so I know. So that makes it doubly neat. I, I feel like there's... I'm kind of intruding here because you two could do this interview without me. You are such. You you are apparently. Very good friends who get along, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. Either that or yeah. you're great actors. I don't know. I, know. I mean, you're and that thank too. God. No, because we're that too. You're that too, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's be but honest. we don't need to act right now. No, no, no. And how wonderful is that, right? Because if, if there wasn't oh, that God. connection, it would be a very yes. difficult show to do. It would be a very different show. Because people comment on It would just be our, harder. It would be our, much harder work. Yeah, because people comment And there would not be the it. little extra. People see that and have commented on it. It's nice. It's great. It's a huge compliment. Do you, when you do these parts though, do you have to find something in yourself that is the same as the people you are portraying? Is there, in other words, is there, is there something in EFPF that you've um, found, oh, I can connect on that level because I too had mm -hmm. that experience or believe that or whatever? Oh, yeah, I think choosing wrong partners for a long time, I know all about that till I finally hit the jackpot. Um, but. Mostly, it's about everything coming from the heart and the gut, and that's very much how I am and operate. So I get that. You share that and with wanting her. wanting to mm -hmm. give that much, as hard as it is, it's worth it. And how about you with Marlena? I would say that I, when she, she is allowed to be vulnerable in this show, which I appreciate. Um, and so I call on personal experiences to help me find that vulnerability for her. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. It's. Mm -hmm. At what point in the show, how many performances have you done so far? Done I lots. don't know. Lots, right? You've been know. out there night after night. Yeah. Is there a moment when the audience reacts in a particular way that surprises you? Does that ever happen? Uh, not anymore. I think maybe initially when there was the the kissing oh God, and there was the that kiss. intake of breath. <gasps> Yikes! We we were, a were bit you sort actually, of taken let's aback. Just, let's just explain this. The, your two characters at some point yes kiss. embrace kiss. Yes, we kiss. kiss. And, yes, we and you yes. hear the audience. Yes, we hear. It's 2019. Either you hear them it's, breathe in. Either it's an dead ooh. silence, like <laughs> thick silence, or, or it's a. <gasps> or sometimes is that good? Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, my yeah, God! Or yeah. some little nervous little laughter. It's, yeah. it's 2019, folks. Yeah. Well, maybe, all, but it's still. They yeah. don't see it that? coming. But they don't <laughs> no, see they it, don't. They don't see it coming, right? No, it's, they it don't. Is, no, no. It is surprising in the I show know. when this happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we've sort of given up the ghost here a bit, so anybody who sees it now will will be Spoiler anticipating alert, it. But yeah. But it happens early in the show. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's the biggest one that that I'm surprised at. I know. But I love it it's... when that you know when the audience. I mean, it's true. You get your energy from the audience, and and um, boy, when they're when they're laughing at the jokes and mm -hmm. and 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 appreciating this relationship and and this 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 journey that we go on, it's just wonderful. It's just great. Yeah. I think yeah, I know what does. another thing that still sometimes surprises me, and I don't look at the audience as a rule, but sometimes when I'm in a concert, in the show, I'm looking out. Yeah. And when I go to the dark side, when I'm getting drugged up and all that mm -hmm. stuff, I mean, I do a pretty wacky version of the end of Milor and the Bravo pour le clown is right out there. And I have to say, I am shocked at the faces that are looking at me like, <laughs> it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> well, and there's something kind of neat about that, too, to barrel down and see those faces that are gone. <laughs> well, because I guess we should explain. You're, you're not just up there on stage sort of far away from people, right? There are, there are oh, seats yeah. that are right at on, the lip of the stage. Correct. Mm -hmm. And Tables. seats that are on kind of how, the stage how as well. It's like dinner, like cabaret. Even, cabaret. Yeah. Cabaret yeah. style. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So y you get really close to people. We get, and well, they, I, Marlena gets up close and personal. You start in, yeah. flirting uh, with someone. We go through. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And even yeah. the front, the first yeah. few rows, I mean, yeah. they're right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I, again, I can't thank you enough on your day off for coming in oh. here and spending some time with us. This was wonderful. P.F. Dietrich is at the CAA Theatre in downtown Toronto. It is playing uh, into January, and um, I loved it, and I think people should go see it. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate it. It thank is you. so great of both of you to be here. Louise Thanks. Pitre, Jane Lewis, great to have you here at TVO tonight. Thanks. Yay. Merci. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.